fractured jaw, broken nose, and a skull fracture that was supposedly so severe that he could taste his own spinal fluid. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Most of you have heard the story about Rudy Tomjanovich in one of the most infamous moments in NBA history. But what you probably don't know is the medical side to understand just how severe these injuries were. We'll break it all down in this video and even go over the supposed story that Rudy T could taste his own spinal fluid. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing to the channel and let's get started. The year was 1977 in a game between the Houston Rockets and the LA Lakers when a fight broke out on the court between the players. Rudy Tomjanovich here on the right was rushing down towards center court to help his teammates when Kermit Washington here at the Lakers, of course as you all know, turned around and just clocked Tomjanovich straight in the face. Now to make this even worse then, Tomjanovich fell to the ground with his head bouncing off of the court. Rudy T suffered a multitude of major injuries, including a broken nose, fractured jaw, fractured skull, of course a concussion, and then the skull fracture was so bad that supposedly he could taste his own spinal fluid. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar described the sound as if a watermelon had been dropped on the floor, and when Rudy T got up, the first thing he asked was if the scoreboard had fallen on him. The team realized how severe this injury was when the surgeon asked Rudy if he could taste anything in his mouth. When he said he could, but it tasted bitter, the doctor knew that that was spinal fluid leaking from his brain, and this was truly an emergency. Next, I'm gonna show you guys some anatomy and we'll break down all these injuries one by one and especially explain this whole spinal fluid thing. Let's talk first about the broken nose. That's probably the least surprising of all these other than the concussion. What's important to know about nasal fractures is the majority of what we feel on our nose is actually cartilage. The actual nasal bones themselves sit really high here, up more at the bridge of our nose. Now, if we look deep up inside sort of our nasal cavity, now we do have more thin bones that are kind of more integrated into the skull and into the face, but the true nasal bones themselves is just this little bridge that you can feel at the top of your nose. Now you have your septum and all the cartilaginous structures inside your nose that can also get damaged when you have a bad nose injury, but when it comes to just broken nose, typically we're thinking of these bones higher up the top. Now that is certainly the least of Rudy T's concerns here, because next we're gonna talk about the jaw fracture. When we think of the jaw, we have essentially two bones. There's the lower portion of the jaw that moves up and down when we talk, and then there's the upper portion. The lower portion of the jaw is the mandible. That's what I've got highlighted here. And the upper portion is fixed with the face and the skull and is the maxilla. Now it looked like Rudy T got hit kind of up on this left side, higher up on the face. And so it would make me suspect that more likely a maxilla fracture is what he could have been dealing with. But this is a big, massive bone. This runs all the way from one side of your face to the other, and you can really have fractures in any specific location. Depending on how bad these are, this portion of the jaw can really almost be sort of not even fixed to the front of the face, depending on if the fractures are on both sides. These fractures are described by something called the Lefort classification, something you might hear about with facial trauma, and it's basically a description for how much of the bone is involved and where exactly those fracture lines extend through. So still compared to what's coming last, the jaw fracture also isn't as big of a deal. The most serious part about this was the skull base fracture that resulted in the leakage of spinal fluid. Our skull is also called the cranium and it's made up of a number of different bones that essentially fuse together when we develop. The one on the front here, pretty easy, frontal bone. Up here on the side is the parietal, down lower is gonna be the temporal bone, and then on the back is gonna be the occipital bone. Buried kind of deep inside here is gonna be something called the sphenoid bone. So if we rotate this around, this whole area sort of at the floor of the skull where the brain sits, that's what's considered the skull base. It's the base or the bottom of the skull. What lives in this area? Of course, the brain, the spinal fluid, a bunch of nerves. And so you can understand how serious these skull base fractures can be because of the communication with our brain. Now you might be wondering, well, what if this is just a big myth? Maybe he didn't actually have a skull base fracture. There's actually pictures we can look at that give us more evidence to say he did. On first glance, this photo might not have anything in particular that stands out other than just the sign of somebody who got beat up pretty bad. We can see he's got some hemorrhaging here inside the eye, again from some of the trauma. But what I want you to pay attention to is the bruising that we can see below Rudy T's eyes on both sides. This is something we call raccoon eyes. It's a sign of something called periorbital ecchymosis, or bruising around the orbit or around the eye. This is one of a couple clinical signs that we have as doctors that suggests that somebody could have a skull base fracture. Essentially what can happen from the trauma is you can tear some of the lining around the brain kind of inside the skull and the veins that are around there can tear and you can actually get bleeding down into the soft tissues around the face. It doesn't stay on one side or the other and so that's why classically with these raccoon eyes, 
you see that bruising around both eyes. If this were just from the hit itself, it would probably just be on one side. You wouldn't have this clear symmetry. And this also looks like it's in the phase of resolving and probably was more severe later on. So yeah, this fits with the reports that he had a skull base fracture in the subsequent spinal fluid leak. Another one of these signs is called the battle sign. It's where you get bruising around the mastoid process behind the ear. And this is significant for specifically more of a posterior skull base fracture. So finally, let's address this spinal fluid that supposedly was leaking from his brain that Rudy T could taste. Yeah, this is definitely possible and I'm sure it's true. This is a cross section going through the skin all the way down through the skull and then ultimately the brain. Our cerebral spinal fluid is this clear fluid that's produced within the brain that helps to provide a number of key functions like structural support, nutrient delivery, waste removal, and some cushioning and buoyancy around our brain and spinal cord. The CSF lives in this subarachnoid space between the dura and between the brain. Our body actually makes a lot of this. We make around 500 milliliters a day of spinal fluid, cycle it throughout the brain, the spinal cord, and then it gets broken down and made new. So you can understand how if you get a fracture of the bone and you get tearing of this dura that sits beneath the bone, the spinal fluid can leak. If we go back to our cross section, remember the brain is sitting in this cavity right here. If we're already dealing with a skull base fracture, a fracture to the mandible here in the front of the face, so any of these lower bones in the base of the skull, that can tear those dura layers, and that can cause spinal fluid to leak down through the bone and actually get back into the portion of the body where you could taste it in your mouth. Air is gonna come in through your nose here and everything is gonna communicate back up with your mouth. And so you've got this connection kind of up at the roof of your mouth and in the base of the skull where you could have a tear and you could have that spinal fluid actually leaking into your mouth where you can taste it. This isn't a super rare thing. We see it with major facial trauma. You can even have spontaneous leaks of spinal fluid. People describe it as sort of having this bitter kind of salty taste and whenever we see it it's clear and you can actually send samples of it to test for a specific compound called beta 2 transferrin that tells the medical staff that yes this is spinal fluid as opposed to just a runny nose or tears from the eyes. That's super serious though because if you have a fracture in the bone you've got tearing that's causing spinal fluid to leak you've got a potential communication for infection to get up into the brain and cause a whole much worse outcome. So yeah, it's extremely believable and possible that Rudy T was able to taste his own spinal fluid because of how bad this injury was. Another doctor who operated on Rudy said that fixing his injuries was like trying to repair a badly battered egg with scotch tape. And that's believable based on how hard that hit was. A lot of these bones around our face, the orbital bones, a lot of these bones kind of deep inside the base of the skull are super thin and super frail compared to something like our femur. They're very thin and it's really, really hard to repair these types of injuries because of all the nerves you've got around here. You've got to worry about the brain, of course. And so, yeah, it makes sense that they would describe it as being that bad. Hopefully these are injuries that we're never gonna see again in any sport. I'm sure we'll see more facial fractures, we'll see jaw injuries, but to have something so bad that there's spinal fluid leakage, hopefully we never see again. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it educational here. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.